In year three and four, we're going to experiment and see what happens when we make paper airplanes and try and launch them with different styles of elastic bands. We're going to be trying to compare what happens when we have long ones, thin ones, fat ones, and possibly even different colored ones as well. First off, we need to make a simple paper airplane design. Now the paper airplane you make will need to be durable because it's going to be used for at least somewhere between 12 and 15 throws, depending on how many elastic bands you want to use. So you need to make sure it's very neat, very crisp and can be used multiple times. There are lots of videos online to how to make them, but here's a quick one in case you need it for at school. You will then need to make a hole in a area not too close to any edges in case it rips. I've made a mark here just to help see it. It's also worthwhile noting that you may want to put a sellotape on it just to strengthen where you're going to put a hole. Yeah. You don't do that on both sides. Once that's done, you can make a hole. And once you have this hole, you can then feed elastic band through quite easily. Okay. Yes, so hopefully. Pull it through. And now you have a mechanism designed to help you pull your paper airplane to go and test in either field or hall later on. When throwing your paper airplane, make sure you're very careful with the elastic band. If you put it too much, you can tear your paper and it can ruin all your experiments. So please be careful. Make sure that on the floor you have an idea of how far you're going to travel. I know that all these tiles are 20 centimetres long, but it's not a very wide space. So I'm assuming them to go much further than this if you were to go to a hall or outside. But let's have a look to see what, how far these go. You can easily use your thumb to help launch it. Or if you want to, you can use a pencil as well to fire it. This sheet has been provided for you in case you want to quickly record down the children's results so you can move on to conclusion much faster, which we're more interested in with our science this time round. Once the children have their results, they should then be able to simply uh, and independently produce conclusions from this. We're looking for them to find trends within the data, like which ones were able to travel furthest or shortest, and then from that also make predictions about what would happen if they had even longer, even wider, or even shorter elastic bands, and what they think might happen. They, you may also challenge your children to find anomalies, such as this one here, which is much, much different compared to the first two results. And then once they've collected all this, you should have a finished conclusion for your children. Welcome to the Year 5 Science Investigation. Today in Year 5 we're hoping that you can try and create parachutes, such as this one here, so that you can experiment and test to see what happens when you just change one variable, like the size of the canopy, to see what happens to the time it takes for the parachute to fall. Now for this you're going to need a few things, um, and you can work in either pairs or by yourself to collect your results and we're very interested to see what conclusions you get from your experiment. That's the main thing we're looking at today. So you can make your canopy either out of square paper or rectangular paper. I'm going to use rectangular to begin with. I'm going to very quickly show you how to make it and then afterwards it's up to you to make your two or three designs and then experiment to see how the 
time changes. So you need your piece of paper, scissors, um, some weights, and I've got bolts for this one, but you can use anything that your teacher has at hand, and also at least four pieces of string to attach to each corner. Right then, let's get started. Now that I've attached one of my strings, I'll do the same in each corner and then try and attach the weights. My parachute is combed so it can catch as much air as possible. You need to make sure that everything you do stay the same apart from one variable, which may be the size. So the slits will be the same, the length of the string will have to be remain the same, but work out with your class what else you need to keep the same as well. After you've done all that, the only other thing you may want to add is a handle to the top, which is just a spare piece of paper that's attached, just so you can easily drop it. Once you've got your few designs ready to test, you can go and find a nice high space and test the timing it takes for each one. Now that I've made my range of parachutes with the same weight on, I'm going to test these by dropping them and timing how long it takes to record. I'm going to drop them independently of each other so I know they won't crash and my results aren't skewed. And I'm going to have to work out first off where I'm going to be dropping from. Do I want the top of the handle to always be at the same height or the bottom of the weight? I'm going to choose bottom weight, but you may choose differently. So after each drop that I do, I'm just going to time it. Three, two, one. Now do the same with the bigger one. Three, two, one. Once I've done that three times, I can collect my results and see where I go to next with my conclusion. 